Is that a breakup? Break I think we have a situation right here. On the feeling station. Welcome to The Feeling Station, a podcast that touches on breakup stories that people would like to talk about with a view to give lessons that the people learned from their experiences. We hope you find the stories entertaining, but more importantly, meaningful given the lessons behind what we're going to talk about today. Now, today is a very special episode for me because it is the fruits of patience, endurance and social media. How do you feel about that, brother? I feel... um I feel like we're, we're good to go. We're about to experience and explore um, mm-hmm. just what it is that Tinto uh, is all about. You know, <laughs> heard a lot about you and your style. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it's, it's really interesting how we made this connection. I won't go into too much detail, but all I will say is, guys, social media is really powerful and do not underestimate the power of it because I'm enjoying the fruits of it right now. Same here, so, man. Yeah, so we're going to go straight into it. Um, as you know, the podcast touches on breakup stories and it's it's really refreshing that I've got a male doing this episode because I've had a lot of females telling their stories. So maybe I'll start by asking you, why do you feel it's okay for you as a guy to talk about your breakup? Wow, um, why is it okay? Because yeah. it's, it's good to talk about uh, these things. It's good to talk about mm-hmm. your stories, your past, um, how you handle things. And when you talk about things, it helps mm-hmm. you um, really reanalyze them and, you know, yeah. you, you use your, your, your current wisdom to judge your past experiences. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. When, you, when, you, when you find new ideas and new ways to look at it, it helps you be better in the present. So it's very oh, good yeah. to talk about these things. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to get uh, straight into it. Part of the reason why this podcast is doing so well is because uh, I do my best to keep you anonymous. So I've picked up a name for you from the lovely country of Zambia, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and the name that I'm going to use to refer to you for the duration of this episode is Tokoni, which is T-O-K-O-N-I, Tokoni. All right. Right? Yeah. Now, you could either shorten that to T or you could shorten that to Toko. I don't know what you want to do. It's entirely up to you. Okay. But what's more important is the meaning behind the name. Mm. So this name means one who always helps others. Mm. Now, yeah. How good is that a reflection of you as an individual? Are you generally quite helpful of others? Do you put yourself second and others first? Okay, so I wouldn't say I put myself second and others first. But what, mm-hmm. what, I, do, what I will say is that I always try to look for win-win situations. I believe that okay. um, in every... Um, endeavor that no one should leave the f- situation feeling shortchanged or shorthanded or like yeah. you know they left something on the table. That's important to me. Nice. So so this actually does feel relevant because you're always looking to help others where you can. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Awesome stuff. Now this is the fun bit for me. What name are you giving the girl you're going to talk about? Um, there's actually three short stories and three girls. I'm going to give one Angela. And <laughs> <laughs> Should I be worried? <laughs> wow. And, and okay. It's, it's so, three so stories because each one is very unique in their situation and they reveal like right. a part of me that one would call like like just different parts of me that are that you wouldn't imagine a normal day. So I'm gonna call one Angela. Yes. Um another one Tafadzwa, just because uh-uh. nudge nudge wink wink. <laughs> 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 this is getting even juicier, right? <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Who's the last one? And the last one, Palessa. Oh, Palessa. Oh, nice. These are. Do you know what? C- can I just say the- these? These are very interesting names. So, so Angela, uh, I know is a uh, is an Anglo name. So that's an English name. Tafadzwa is obviously a Zimbabwean Shona name. Palessa for me sounds quite South African. Is uh, is that right? It is South African, and it means uh, black rose. You. This guy, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a very good feeling about this one. Oh, okay, cool. So, so the names I have, I got Angela Tafadzwa and Palessa. And uh, an- again, another reason why this podcast is doing well is the fact that people learn real life lessons. Mm. So, what would you like people listening to this episode to learn? Uh, I would like us to learn that, um, you know, sometimes. It's either you're just a, you're, you're silly and immature, and, yeah. and you don't know how to handle things. Sometimes you may be as mature as you think, but you just don't know better because you know it's such a complicated situation. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. those are the two things that I think, and then just, just give ourselves grace sometimes and, and believe that, you know, in the future, we'd either be better than our, our, our present or just to see the growth and just acknowledge that, okay, you know what? I was trash here. Yeah. And now I'm, yeah. I'm better. Do you know, for, for me, what that really sounds like is really about growth, the, both the lessons that you've given. So, um, grow up. We may be less mature than we think we really are, mm-hmm. and give yourself that time in that room to actually grow. So for me, the the, the, the pivotal and cornerstone of this whole thing is really growth. Yeah. This is what I'm getting from you. Would that be a fair assessment? Very, very fair. Very fair. Cool. Uh, the mic is yours now, brother. Go on. Tell me how. Do, who are we talking about first? Angela Tafazo or Palessa? In that order. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's get into it. Angela, what did you like about Angela and why did you guys get together? How did you get together? Oh, Angela, we got together because, um, first of all, I'm a guy that, that likes uh, girls who are crazy about me. Uh, what? You, you like girls that are crazy about you? Yeah, like the more she likes me, the more I feel like... Like the more she shows it, the more she expresses it, yeah. the more she wants to be around me. Like, yeah. I love that energy. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Do you give the same energy back? I don't, but okay. <laughs> I don't, but the way it is is that they are never, uh, uh, they never doubt that I feel for them. You know, so I'm not the most, I think, you know what, that's actually what makes them attract to me. I don't, I'm not so like expressive. I don't like, go about spilling my feelings in the air anyhow like i have a very like self-possessed um yeah. air about me and it's that is that air is that composure that um my ability to use my eyes and my 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 my, mm-hmm. my behavior my actions to seduce yeah. that's what they like so they're the ones who do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow so so they're seduced by the lack of expression pretty much it's I want yeah, it, I want it's a lack of expression, uh, but it's uh, I don't fawn over anybody. So uh, I I need to ask you this question because this is very interesting, and I think I've seen it in a, in a few guys before. Mm. D- do you do this deliberately, or this is just the person you are by nature? It's who I am by nature. Okay, which is why it works so well. You know, yeah, because it comes naturally. It comes to you. naturally. You know, they they from the moment they meet me, they they get that. You know, and then obviously mm-hmm. when, when I start to talk, you know, I can I can express myself. You know, communicate communicate, tell stories, and you know, do mm-hmm. all the little show show my best qualities. You know, and have mm-hmm. them you know enamored with me. But at the same, nice, <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a, that's a really big word, and 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 I can see how it would work if you say that somebody is uh, uh, um, enamored by you. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it sounds to me like in this instance, Angela was pretty much enamored by you. Oh, yes, she was. Oh, nice. Okay. Where where did you guys meet? We're in uni, and mm-hmm. uh, we were. I was a year. So I was in what second year. She was in first year, mm-hmm. and uh, she was pretty young and impressionable. Um, mm-hmm. I would say I was maybe twenty one, and she was like nineteen. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess. Yeah, but let's just say that my my um, nationality, the differences in our nationalities. Mm-hmm. But she, yeah, she was uh, South African. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay, so yes, that made me an uh, an exotic. You know, oh, adventure for her. I see, I see what you mean. Okay, so the difference in nationalities was attractive. Yeah, that also played a part. So she was okay. Nice. She was drawn to that, you know, as a as a local girl, yes. you know, who has been with men like her for the longest time she started mm-hmm. dating as a as a you know 15 16 year old mm-hmm. and now here she is in uni and she's meeting all yeah. kinds of people and then there's this Different Zambian guy. dude yeah mm-hmm. who has mm-hmm. um all kinds of weird quirks and interesting mm-hmm. uh stories to tell and it's like okay mm-hmm. that was just that was the perfect storm for all kinds of things to happen Oh dear. So how did you guys then become boyfriend and girlfriend? Did you ask her out or you just started having a fling? Uh yeah, she wouldn't have a she wouldn't have a fling without us being official. So that was the first thing. She made that okay. clear. Oh, okay. And you know what? So I thought at the time, she's all right, she's great, she's uh she's not a bad person to couple up with. So we started dating mm-hmm. and it was, it was cool. It was very nice, actually. And then whilst you're doing this whole coupling thing, it sounds to me like something changed. 
within your relationship? What happened? Um, what changed was that I had to I had to leave the country. I, I was moving for six months to um, Malaysia on exchange, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. me being the the young, you know, ladies man that I am, mm-hmm. I didn't want to. I didn't want to be encumbered to tether to anyone while I was there. I want to be able to free. I want to be free to explore. It, it, I guess it sounds to me like you're one of those guys who knows that long distance is is not really your thing. Uh, it's it's not. It's a thing. It can it can work. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've already built enough of a relationship prior to the long term, okay, thing happening. So, but if it's just long term of the bat, it's it's not ideal. Okay. And at that yeah. time, you just felt, no, this is not my cup of tea. I'd rather get rid of this uh, connection, move to Malaysia and have fun whilst out there if I needed to. Yeah, I was young. I didn't feel the need. I didn't feel like I had to like commit to this person, you know, for my, like in such, a, in such a strong way because, you know, I still wanted to explore um, life. I wanted to see what was out there. And I'm moving to another country. I just didn't feel, and I didn't want to cheat. I'm not, that's, I don't cheat. I mean, black men don't cheat. So yes, I, I totally agree with that. <laughs> I, I can count the number of eyes that have just rolled when I made that statement. Oh, you bet. <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble for it. If looks could kill, you would be dead in your studio. Um, I mean, but I've got a question for you though. If It doesn't sound to me like potentially you were in love with Angela as much as you would want to because if you are deeply rooted with this lady, you would do everything to keep her. But in this instance, you are prepared to let her go just because you're moving country. Were you really in love with Angela? No, I wasn't really in love with Angela. No, to be to be honest, and and mm-hmm. that's fair because I don't think you need to be really in love with somebody to value them, to appreciate them, to spend time with them, you know, and to mm-hmm. treat them right. So for the duration of our relationship, you know, it was it was pretty great. You know, she was the one. She loved me already. She, I mean, I mean, she loved me because that's what people do. They just catch feelings and they call it love, right? So that's fair. Yeah. 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 But I was more of the of the mindset of um, just like I knew I had feelings for her. I liked her, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to be with anyone else. But it wasn't mm-hmm. that kind of love where I would, you know, you know, change my entire personality or desires for her, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it had to be something as as monumental as moving countries for me to consider ending it. And it was it was a hard breakup. Damn. Yeah, but the how, the what's really interesting about the story is how it happened. This is where my my how my immaturity um, came in at the time. Right? How did it happen? So um, I should start by saying that I'm very heavy on music. Okay, nice. Yeah, uh, music is a big part of uh, my 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 being, and I have a very good taste in music. In fact, mm-hmm. I made music back in the day, which is what g- gives me the tools for podcasting right now. So what had happened was when I was ready to, you know, call our relationship off, I did it in the most dramatic way possible. And in a way that I've always like fantasized about doing it. Don't tell me you wrote her a song. Worse. No worse way. That. What did you do, bro? So there's a song by a band called Jackie Boys. Okay. And the song is called Parade. Uh-huh. And I played it in the background while she was in my dorm room. And I broke up to her while the song was playing. Oh my and gosh. So it, it like set the tone like for a really like emotional. Oh um, my goodness. Why yeah. did you do that? Why did so you the, do that? Hold on. So, so, so the lyrics mm. were, were playing, right? And mm-hmm. there was a part where it's like, um, we're moving forward, but I just don't love you the same. Mm. And that was playing. And, you know, I would even like quote the lyrics as I'm speaking to her. Right. And this babe was just like in tears in front of me on my bed. And I was sitting on my computer. I'll never forget. It's been, what, almost 10 years? And it's still um, a visceral memory. Yeah, needless to say, she was devastated. She was heartbroken. And in true in true fashion, it was so poetic because when a friend of mine was, uh, a, fr- a mutual friend was telling me how she was dealing, he told me that uh, she was playing Adele's Someone Like You on repeat in her dorm room. Jeez. That was the time the song came out. You know Adele's Someone Like You was yeah, very popular at yeah, the time. Yeah. So yeah. this gives you a time frame of when this happened. Of course, yeah, it does. Yeah. So um, that was a break. That, now this is me breaking up with her, right? 
Yeah. Dude. So this, this is what the story is. The other story is also about that. And the last story is about how heartbreak affected me, how I was heartbroken. You see now, now, now for me, this, this, this breakup that she did with Angela is a bit painful, bro. I mean, come to think of it, I, I, I can see why you say that it was immature. Yeah. Because what it meant is that you actually planned. So you sat down and you thought, what would be the best way to make this heartbreak effective? Yeah. And, and, and you picked up a song, found a song, played the song, said the words according to the song, and then monitored the reaction. Yeah. That's very dark. Uh, yeah, it was dark. It was, yeah. it was, it was actually, cause so I'm a, I'm a, I'm weird in many ways. Right. And one of the mm. weird things that I do is, um, I'm a big fan of social experiments. I feel like I like to like put people in situations and see how they react. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of human nature. Like one of the things I do is I like, I just enjoy the show of it and I hardly like get, I hardly take things personal. So mm -mm. that was, so that's something I apply in my work, you know, in marketing and branding, even yeah. in podcasting, you know, like knowing my listeners and like just knowing how people are triggered and stuff like that, mm -mm. you know? So the, at that time, I didn't know what that was. I didn't, I didn't know that was, that's what it was at the time, but it was one of those things where I had this song that I liked mm -hmm. and, you know, as someone who really feels songs, cause it was also emotional for me. Don't get me wrong. I, I it wasn't yeah. an easy breakup. Right. But at the same that time, be, that, that was going to be my next question to say, was this easy for you? Or it wasn't, it wasn't easy at all. It was, it was painful as fuck. If I can swear, seeing her mm, mm. in that state, but it was just, so my immature side just wanted to have that scenario. Something I always thought of doing, you know, like what, what, what would it be like? It just so happens that at the same time, it's someone I cared about and someone that I, I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to see in that situation. But I just yeah. had to do it to satisfy that urge, that immature, that sociopathic urge to like Damn, just bro, you, super you know, dramatic. I'm, I'm glad you used that that expression, a sociopathic, because that 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 sounds. I don't know. I really don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Have you, at the back of your mind, have you always felt a need to reach out to Angela and apologize for doing it that way? So, if we're continuing the story, right? So yeah. six months later, I was back in South Africa. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, friends who were, who, who knew her told me that she got into like a whole, whole phase after that. What does that mean? A whole phase is when a girl who's been like really good for so long decides to let loose sexually. Oh, just like really okay, right. Explore. She just goes crazy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, um, mm -hmm. and so I, I felt bad about that, you know, mm -hmm. And so I would see her on campus and for a couple of months, she wasn't really like, she just hated my guts. And she, in fact, she was dating someone else at the time. You know, did that bother you? No, it did not. Okay. <laughs> it did not one bit. <laughs> so, but I did eventually, um, I forget the, the circumstances, but we did eventually get to talk and sit down and, and um, talk about it all. And I, I apologized. And um, mm -hmm. I think she, I, I, I knew at least at that point, you know what, actually part of my appeal is that I'm actually very mature for my age, even when I was doing that, you know? So I didn't, when I did what I did, it wasn't out of, it wasn't because I didn't know better. It's just because I wanted to see, I wanted to like, know. I wanted to like do this. So I was very aware. So it wasn't like I was immature because I was just a kid. I was immature in that I was willing to test out something that I shouldn't have tested out just mm just for kicks. So that was just what it, that's just me. I'm, that's my dark side playing, coming out in that, in that regard. But in general, I knew that I should talk to her, that I had to like give her that closure and apologize. And I did that. And, um, she began, she was fine after that. I mean, she was, she got over her whole phase and she became her old self again. And, um, and that was that. So out of curiosity, when you apologized, what were you apologizing for? I was apologizing for, um, I didn't apologize for this for the for the music and everything. That was inconsequential at the time. I, I think we laughed about it actually. But what I did mm. apologize for was um just everything that the the, the breakup put her through. Because she went through a lot of pain. You know, mm. like I said, she did, she was she was smitten. I was the mm -hmm. one if you let her tell it, you know, at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I knew this, but I was still I still had to do what I had to do. Whether whether it's with or without the song, I still had to break up with her to fulfill my own yeah. 
you know, agenda. So, so let's talk about Malaysia a little bit. Okay. D- did you actually have the fun that you expected to have, which made oh. you need to break up with her? Oh yes, I did. Oh, oh dear, yes. the way you said <laughs> the way you said that <laughs> makes me scared to ask what happened. I I think that answer is sufficient. Okay, so so I guess your conscience was free at that time because you knew that you didn't have anybody tethered to you, as you said. Yes, Malaysia, bro. Those those six months um, are some of the best um, times of my life. <laughs> actually, you know, just as 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 because look at it like this, right? Mm-hmm. I was a young man with a lot of time and a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, just exploring a whole new city without having to spend um, precious time worrying about someone back home or, you know, having to be on the phone, keeping in contact, you know, keeping in touch, you know, trying to manage all these things. I was free. So mm-hmm. I met people. I made friends, did all kinds of things. And it was worth it. I would do it a hundred times over. Right. If okay. I had to. Yeah. yeah, no, at least, I, I mean, it, it It sounds like it, it panned out as you were hoping it would. Now, now, okay, so I think that's Angela wrapped up, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, Tafadzwa, what happened there? With Tafadzwa, um, I have to juggle my memory a bit for this one. Yeah, you know what, actually, let's let's jump to, to Palesa. Um, to tell me about uh, your situation with Palesa, how did you guys meet? How we met, we met at... Um, a party, I believe. We met at a party mm-hmm. and it was really brief. Actually, we, we first saw each other on social media randomly. I thought she was cute. She thought I was oh. cute as well. But, you uh, know, how, how? How is that? How is that, that? I mean, how does that happen on social media? Did you see, uh, we're just scrolling through your timeline, saw someone you liked and then you're like, oh, okay. We Yeah, we just, I think we had a mutual friend and I was liking, we liked the same photo or she commented. I, I forget the details of what, what I do know is that one thing led to another and I slid in her DMs and we talked nah, ah, That's what I was after. <laughs> How did you find out? Who got into whose DM? Okay, so you slid into her DM, right? Yes, okay. And then you're like, hey, Palissa, yeah, you know, you look good. Hey, what, what, what? What was the reception like? Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't comment on her looks because I knew, I knew better than that. You know, girls are okay. really like, girls are really um, sensitive to people who focus on their, on their external beauty. So I left, I left, in fact, I left any clues of my attraction till when we met each other and when we did meet each other, it was, um, it wasn't, wasn't planned. I bumped into her at the party and then oh. that was when I like knew for sure. Okay, damn, I want to, I want to fill this up seriously now. You mm, know? <laughs> nice. Nice. So we exchanged numbers and yes. we, we spent the next three months, you know, communicating via, um, phone calls and chats. Mm-hmm. And, um, and would these be long phone calls? Oh, those kinds, those kinds that, you know, when you, when you, when you spend late nights, hours on the phone with someone, you, you, you gotta fall, you gotta fall. There's no, there's no other wow. way, you know? And That's so crazy. I whispered all the sweet nothings in her ear, mm-hmm. you know, talked all the talk that needed to be talked, you know? And, um, at some point at first she was resisting because she, she wasn't in that phase for relationship. She was actually coming off something that was, um, was, was, was traumatizing. And at the same time, yeah. there was someone else on her case. Oh, so, so she had to make a decision between that guy and you. Oh yes. Nice. Oh yes. I made it. I, then then I, she came your way. And yes, she did. <laughs> how did you, win, <laughs> how did you win a heart over? I mean, what were you doing that the other guy wasn't doing right? You know, I believe in something, right? When you're, when you're in that situation where you are, she, someone has to choose between you and someone else, mm-hmm. I believe in communicating with her as opposed to competing with him, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't focus too much on the other guy. Like, I didn't know who he was and I, and I didn't need to know. All I knew was this girl was giving me her time mm-hmm. for a reason and I had to, like, utilize it. So um, we had a lot of, like, intimate moments. We had a lot of things mm-hmm. to build on. And then um, what happened was in December, so this was, this happened, let's say between October and December, right? Mm-hmm. In December, we had the opportunity to um, be away from any distractions like work. So it was Christmas holiday. Mm-hmm. So there was no work, no distractions. We just had nothing but time in our country homes because we went to our country homes in the, in the, yeah. in the countryside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, when you're, in the, when you're in the country, there are no parties, no distractions. It's just time and, you know, yeah. sleeping, waking up, just doing random stuff. 
Mm-hmm. So that was where we now had enough time to spend with each other. And then at that time, she had the, the feelings had entered deeply now. Nice. Yeah. For, for, for both of you or just for you? For both of us. For both of yeah. us. Mm-hmm. And then um, it got to a point where she was now certain that she wanted us to like go on a date. And even after the date, which was amazing, she was still mm. in between two minds because she just wasn't ready. So, so when you say in between two minds, is this in between two minds, between you and the other guy or between you guys being friends and getting into a relationship? Yes, between us getting into a relationship or being friends. The guy was no, no longer a factor. Okay. I just yeah, yeah. I cl- I cleared all doubts in that regard. You know? So why was she doubting that if you guys had so many emotions, what was making a hold back? And what was stopping you from saying to her, I want you to be my girl? Nothing, nothing stopped me from telling her that I, she already knew I wanted her to be my girl. But what was stopping her was just mm. the, the, the fierceness of the emotions she was feeling. Bro, when babies fall for me, it's crazy. <laughs> when they fall for you it's mad it's mad man I can't even yeah. explain it but I mm-hmm. do know from, from my first girlfriend to my last mm-hmm. like they fall hard they fall hard and and just and that's just like a testament to the the kind of like I'm not, I'm not playing games I'm very authentic I'm very honest I'm very like you know I'm, I'm very likable funny like I have mm-hmm. all the things that a woman needs to like, like let, let her guard down. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So like, once you let me in, like once you give me the opportunity to speak to you on a regular basis, it's a wrap. I would say you're finished. Yes, you're finished. It's different <laughs> if maybe, yeah. you know, um, you like reject me on the, you know, the first meeting or you like just decide you're not really in the space. So you don't like give me the time of day, but once you give yeah. me the time of day, it's done. So, so, so Palessa obviously was, was, was finished. And now she was struggling to make that decision between, um, yes to a relationship or keep a friendship. Is this because of what she had come out of? Did she have reservations because she had been burnt? Yes, she did. She was, yeah, she was, um, she was shocked at because she was sure that she was not going to be dating anytime soon, and she was sure mm-hmm. that that her her heart was cold. But here, here yeah. she was talking to this guy, and mm-hmm. everything was not as she as, as as planned, and it was confusing for her because you know, of course, like, it was that internal conflict to say, you know, yeah. how, how and why am I feeling this way when I told myself that I'm not going to be this girl. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm-hmm. Okay, right, and and then um, I'm guessing at some point she decided, okay, let's give this a shot. Yeah, she. It was so funny because she called like late one night. So what what had happened mm. was, I had told her that I didn't want to be friends with her, and if I couldn't, if I couldn't like have her in my life on a more intimate level, that I don't think I wanted to, you know, keep keep this going. Really, you were th- you you were that direct. Yeah, you really you really wanted this girl, didn't you? I did, I did. And, wow. and I knew, and I knew, I knew this was what I had to do because I think I had spent, we had spent like the better part of three months, you know, really like making a case and like, um, you know, developing, developing that relationship. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to, um, just let that be there. I felt like I'd made a case. And I knew I was dope. She knows I was dope. She knows that, that, that this could work and this would be amazing. So there was no, mm. there was no need, there was no point of dilly dallying anymore. It's like, you know, if you want to keep enjoying what you enjoy with me, you know, these conversations, these feels, yeah. this like, you know, this everything, like, yeah, let's let's do this right. But you know, I'm not gonna waste these feelings I have as well. Yes, yes, on on something that is, you know, and that really like put her on notice. So like a couple of days later, she called like close to midnight, mm. and she was like. Let's do it. Nice. Were you excited? Bro, the feels I caught. I mm-hmm. caught such feelings. She was the first girl I loved, actually. The very first girl you loved? Yeah. Like, she's the first person I said, I love you too. And, I, and, and um, it was amazing. Amazing. Does this mean that you've never said, I love you to all of your other exes? Never. Yeah. Never? Uh-huh. Yo, that's deep, man. Not even as a joke. Not, as, not even to like lie to her, not even to get in her pants, not even, I don't play with that word. Whoa. So why were you with them if you didn't love them previously? Because, because love is like, to me, it's the height of the emotions you feel for someone that you want to go to the ends of the earth for. You want to like, you know, you feel something, you feel like, like, like this person is someone you want to go all the way with. And I never felt that way with those other ones. And yeah. but at the same time, you don't have to love someone to like, 
you know, care for them, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. to have feelings, right? So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had to like, um, you know, it was just normal. Like you just like someone, you like their company and you want to do stuff with them, you know, just do eat out, you know, make love, eat out some more, do stuff, mm-hmm. hold hands, you know, talk, you know, just you want someone to, to be with them. The thing is, I think, you know, over time that could develop into love if, you know, things happen as they happen. But yeah. you know, in general, it just never got there for me. So, and if you never got there, I never felt the need to say it. The girls would say it and they would be, you know, obviously upset that I didn't say it back, but I would explain to them the way I'm explaining to you right now. Yeah. And they would, they would get it and they would be fine. So I think in the end, I was just a very good communicator, bro. Interesting. I'm a very good communicator. Like I know how to like get to the bottom of things. So, so speaking about being a good communicator, right? And getting to the bottom of stuff. Who was the first between you two to say I love you? Were you the first to say I love you to her? Or she was the first to say I love you to you? She was the first to say it to me. Now, if you felt so much for her, what stopped you from saying it in the first place? Why did you wait for her to say it? Because I didn't know. I didn't know I felt it until she said it. Really? Yeah, it was up after she said it. In fact, I didn't even say it, to, say it back to her immediately. Like, so I was at her place and she said it to me and then I was still processing. And then when I got home and we we're talking, then I realized, you know what, mm-hmm. damn, like, this is it. And then I told her, I called her and I told her that, you know, how I felt, that I loved mm-hmm. her. And she was the first person I ever, like, said it to and felt it for like that. Did she, did she like the fact that you said that to her? Oh, she did. You know, girls love to be talked to. Man. Yeah, but, um, at that point, do you feel like you you empowered her? How so? If I, if I was a girl and I'm hearing that I'm the first one to make a guy say I love you to me, that would empower me. That would that would kind of put you at the tip of my fingers a little bit. Oh, yeah. I would feel I got a bit of control over you. Well... So that's what I mean. Do you feel by telling her that you are the first girl I've ever said I love to, you gave her that power to control you a little bit? Not that it's a problem, but do you feel you did? I think control is the is the the wrong word. I don't think she felt like she had the power to control me or she had power over me, but she did mm-hmm. feel like she was worth it, right? She felt validated. She felt like she has, you know, she felt like it was an achievement for her because she knows, mm-hmm. she knows she, like, girls know the kind of guy I am, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, Getting to that point, she felt very, very encouraged. She felt assured. She felt like this was moving forward. And um, but she, I didn't. I don't think she felt like she would control me or like get me to do stuff. Yeah. Like and and the thing about my kind of love is that just because you know I love you doesn't mean that my head goes out the window. I'm still very, very. <laughs> You're still reasonable. <laughs> I'm very, very reasonable. You don't wear blinkers. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't wear blinkers. But I do know now, how to like let go sometimes, you know? Nice. Now, before I get into the cracks of what happened between you two, I'm, I'm really intrigued by, by the fact that out of all the exes you've had, she's the one who turned your head, you know, yeah. and, and got you falling in love. Mm-hmm. But do you remember what it was about that really made you feel like, damn, I love this girl? Was it her looks? Was it her body? Was it the way she spoke to you? What was it that was different about her that wasn't in all your other exes? Remember I said in the beginning that I like it when girls like really like show how they feel and like really feel yeah. for me. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was there, and that was that that that, that started it all. Oh, no, no, not started it all, but like that was part of it, right? But mm. what it really was was the fact that we had the work it took to get here. Like I worked okay. together, you know. I worked, you know. I had to like, you know, actually try. Mm. You because know, you you remember I told you that she had reservations. She wasn't really feeling it, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah. being in a relationship mm-hmm. and I, I was already like deep in my feelings for her way mm-hmm. before she was already I was sure and she wasn't so you know you know when you work for something and, and, and you finally like oh yeah absolutely get it that played a yeah. huge part as well because I knew what I what you know you know what you know what it was worth to you okay you know? It's like money you earned as opposed to money you just get. Yep, I was going to give that example to say that any money that you work your ass for, you really appreciate and value mm-hmm. versus money that you say you just won from a lottery or something because yeah. you didn't put any effort into it. You're more likely to spend that more and quicker than that which you worked hard for. So this, yeah, I, I totally get why you were in this position. So, so what went wrong? You know, arguments. You start to realize the deeper you go in that 
there are a lot of differences between you two. And mm-hmm. sometimes you, you, you get yourself in situations where the, your differences are bigger than your maturity level. Right. Yes. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. So you're just not prepared to handle that sort of challenge. You know, neither was she, neither was I. So we would argue a lot, you know, even though we, we, we loved each other, even though, you know, everything was um, just amazing. We always had, we always went back to certain like little things that became big things. And like what? Okay. Maybe the fact that, you know, she was easily, she was a bit insecure about herself. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So she would, um, she would feel, she would easily feel like she was being patronized or being condescended towards. By you? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or, you know, she would, she would just feel like, um, like from time to time, her trauma would just come back. Like the thing, whatever she's, she's dealt with in the past, whatever she's still dealing yeah. with, would just yeah. come in and like poison the waters and it would make things really difficult. And at yeah. the same time, I was, um, not as tuned in to, to that as I should have been, mm-hmm. you know, cause if I was, I would have been able to speak to those concerns. Right. But I wasn't. So even my powers of communication fell short cause I just didn't see or know this at the time what was going on. So we're just arguing blindly. Uh, did you not see this or understand this because you'd never been in, in a situation like that before or you recognized it, but felt, look, I really shouldn't be the one to deal with this bullshit. Um, it's more like I was, I've never been in this situation before. Okay. I've never been in it. Yeah. I think that's an important thing because sometimes we all don't know how to react to certain situations because they've never been presented to us. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, you're, and, you know, you know, and so your reaction and the way that you behaved in that is, is perfectly normal. And I think it's perfectly okay because you were unexposed. Simple. Yes. Unexposed. But when you started noticing that, okay, this person gets triggered by these sort of things, um, do you feel you could have handled it differently now when you look back? Oh, for sure. Mm. Uh, for sure. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, as they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was one of those things where, so two things could have happened, right? It mm-hmm. was either, it was, well, two things happened, one of them happened. So what happened was we broke up, but what, what could have happened is if there was a bit more patience on both our ends, I feel like mm-hmm. I'd have figured it out. I always like figure it out. Yeah. You know, so we just didn't have the opportunity to like get to that point because the arguing just, it got exhausting. But the thing with arguing is that it's through those arguments that you, that you get to the truth. Mm-hmm. You just have to power through no matter how hard or exhausting or repetitive mm-hmm. it feels sometimes. You just have to keep talking about some shit and then, mm-hmm. you know, eventually... You get to the core. Yeah, you, you, you keep finding new ways to communicate the same thing until it hits. So what is it that it hits then? What was the core? What was the main thing? It never got to hit. And that was what we just spoke about. Like just the fact that I wasn't compassionate enough. Okay. And um, I let my emotions get the best of me. Now, this is where the breakup happened, right? So mm-hmm. we're, mm-hmm. we're arguing over the phone as usual. Mm-hmm. And she said something that, you know, got me in my feelings. And I, and I said to her that, um, I, so one of the things where you just break up in a fit. So I just said, you know what? I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done by like, let's end this. And then, Bruh. yeah. And that's what out of character for me, but yeah, that's what happens when you actually like, l- like love someone, you know? And that was my first time. So I didn't know like those emotions were, were just wild in me. So I just like vexed, you know, mm. whereas, in my past relationships where I wasn't as emotionally invested, I could always have my wits around me and like manage situations. Yeah. But where you're feeling it deeply for someone, sometimes you just like lose your, your, um, your bearings. You know, that's why people like, you know, do things like hit people sometimes yeah. in your relationship. Yeah, like yeah. You often forget that you might not do it on a normal circumstance, but just the emotions of things. And I guess no, it's not an excuse, but it's something to recognize, right? So mm. that was um, what it was. But now, once I did that, once we hung up the phone, I immediately regretted it. Mm. I knew that, oh shit, you know what? I shouldn't have done it this way. I shouldn't have done that. But then, ego came into play. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, yes, it did. 
Jeez. And and this is the this is the 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 downside of knowing that someone is smitten by you, right? Yeah. So I knew I knew because because I knew how she felt about me. Yeah. I kind of abused it in that moment. I, I said to myself that you know what I was gonna like let her suffer the pain of my of my absence, my silence, and then when I was ready, I would reach out and mend you know the bridge. So uh, I've got to make a comment on that, uh, okay. Tokoni, whilst we're on this, right? Mm. Because mm. you said you said you just want to step back and let her feel the wrath of your pain and blah 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 blah. And let's go back to the very first one that you spoke about, Angela. You know, the yeah. same sort of thing was playing at mind when you when you made that song play whilst you're breaking up with her. Exactly. Yes. That 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 almost sounds a, a, a bit sadistic. I think sadistic is 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 a wrong word because it's as soon as I took pleasure in their pain, I didn't. I can't tell whether you did or you didn't because it's happened twice. It's happened, it's happened twice, but for different reasons. It, it doesn't matter what the reason is. The event still occurred. It still happened. So, <clears throat> so you could have 10, 10 different reasons, but the event is still happening. This is the angle I'm coming from. Context is key. And, and, and the, the context here is that in that situation, in, in Angela's situation, Mm-hmm. Um, I I played the song, you know. You played it for effect. Yeah, for effect to set the mood, to set right. the ambience, so, just to like. So yeah. my question would be: How would you measure the effect of that? Based on her reaction, based on on you know the the way it the, the, the way it played out, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is the point I'm getting at. So, so there was a motive to that. Yes. Which was to get a reaction, and this is the reaction that you would monitor. Um, and then in this instance, there's, um, again, you know, ego comes in, and you are saying, okay. Yeah, but that's you know, the difference. I, ego came in, was, was at play in this situation. Ego wasn't at play in that situation. I was doing that because I had to break up with her. Either way, like, it just was just a matter of how it happened. Like, I, didn't, I didn't break up with her I didn't, I didn't break up with her just to have that happen, like to see how the music and everything would happen. Mm-hmm. It was just a thing I decided to do because I was breaking up anyway. So let, why not see? You get So what would we describe it as? Because it, it, it still just feels like standing at a distance and letting things play out. So in this instance, you know, Ego came in. I know this girl is really into me. She loves me so much. I'm going to let it play out. I'm going to let her wallow in her pain and then she'll come back to me or I'll go back to her knowing that she's softened up. What would you call that? I would call that immaturity. That's simply what it is. It's what people do. It's, it's nothing new. People do that all the time. You want to like, you want to like test the resolve of your partner. You want to like... I'm not sure people do that. I'm not sure people do that because, because I don't think I'll do such a thing. Just seeing somebody's tears is, is hurtful enough for me not to want to bring them again or something like that. But you, you forget the situation, right? It was an argument. Mm. I was in, I was mm-hmm. in pain, so I wanted her to feel my pain. You get, I wanted her to feel what I was feeling, and like I said, this is me in love now. I've never been here. I've never been in this situation. So yeah, really and fully, my ego was just like, I just wanted her to miss me. I wanted her to feel what I was feeling, and I felt like maybe that distance and that time would give us a way a way forward. Now, interestingly, you, you, you've mentioned two things that for me potentially contradict themselves. So okay. you're a very good communicator, right? Okay. But if you're such a great communicator, how did you fail to communicate the pain you're feeling? Because you said you wanted to feel what you're feeling. If you're a great communicator, you could have just said it. Hey, babe, I'm feeling this way about this. It's really making me feel this way. That's what a great communicator would do. Yeah. So, are you a great communicator or not? When you're in your feelings, when you're in love, when you're feeling those emotions, it's different. The rules go out the window. Your, your, your composure, like I raise my voice in a way I don't raise my voice ever. Like that's, the, that's what love does. It brings out a side of you that um, it can bring out your best and it can bring out your worst in the same breath. So, the contradiction is fair and aren't we all contradictions anyway? 
you know. And whilst we'll run that again, uh, if 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 I can just pick this up. So one of the things that you mentioned whilst we were speaking um, was that you're one of those guys who always keeps their head on when they're in a relationship and when they're in love. So you didn't wear any blinkers. You were very focused. Mm-hmm. But it feels like you lost a bit of that focus somewhere when this character came out that you didn't even realize that, whoa, who's this and what's happened? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like, so were you actually really still using your head or this was, or you lost it at some point? Yo, man, when you, when you love somebody, especially when you love somebody who is underdeveloped in many ways, like she was also like immature, you know, she mm-hmm. had like her own flaws, you know, she had her own like toxic traits that, you know, came into that situation. So when you, when you love someone who is, you know, that flawed and, not in that position where they're like trying to be better at the time. Mm-hmm. She was still like dealing and still figuring things out. So she wasn't like actively trying to be better. She still felt like she was justified in all she was doing and like she had the right to feel how she feels, all that jazz. Yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah, when, yeah. You're, when you're dealing with that kind of person and you're in love with them, mm-hmm. it's going to bring out the worst in you, whether you like it or not. Even if Yeah, you're, it's going to bring out things that you didn't think even existed, isn't it? Because you're dealing with so many conflicting things at the same time. Exactly. And even if you told her, so even, even if saying to her, oh, this is how I felt. Because I already said that. I feel like mm-hmm. knowing me, I did, you know, say all those things. So what I did was a last resort. It was like, this was now like um, that last chance to like really like make her feel what I was feeling. And boy, did it backfire because Jeez. it turns out that I waited a, w- a week too long. Because by the time I reached out to her, I was like, can we work this out? She was like, mm-hmm. no, nah, nah, she's done that she had really? cried me out of her system this whole week. Oh. Yeah. Damn. And that was where, like, my own, like, pain began to, like, multiply because I, I did everything. I, you know, I made promises. You know, I sent gifts. I talked to her family members. You know, I, 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 I showed up in a way that I haven't showed up for anybody before. Yeah. You know, just yeah. to, to prove myself and to, you know, win her back. But she was certain that this wasn't going to work. And at that, was, at that point, I walked away. I never saw her again. Are you guys connected on social media? I mean, I see her from time to time, but yeah. we've, we've, um, we, we, we don't communicate anymore. Do you know what I think might have happened there, Tokoni? What? Remember, she had come out of something which sounds like it had crushed her to bits. Mm-hmm. Right. Remember the saying that girl that, that uh, the saying that goes, "What doesn't kill you makes you stronger." Yeah. So she went through that thing. It didn't kill her. So she had some emotional strength that she didn't have before. Pretty much, you know, when you go to the gym, you don't have any muscles. Yeah. <laughs> you lift a few. You know, you lift a few heavy weights. They kill you. But after a certain number of sessions, those weights become nothing, and you start pushing harder. Yeah. So her emotional scale had got to a point where she could deal with what you handed her. And and for you, on the other hand, this was your first case. <laughs> <laughs> and so you were yeah. receiving, you know, the brunt of it. It wasn't even so much that she had the strength to mm-hmm. get over me. It was that I left it too long. If I called her like a day after or even three days after, maybe you could have been yeah. saved. But... By the time I called her, she had like, she had that, like that emotional waterfall where she like just cried me out of her system, where she questioned herself and her worth and everything because here's another guy breaking up with me or another ended relationship, another failed relationship, you know, Mm. what is wrong with me? She had, she had gone through that, that, you know, the motions while I was busy, like still figuring out, you know, what I was going to do next. Right, and we didn't communicate. Even when she sent me a message and everything, I would like ignore it. I wouldn't. You know, I was just so my my ego was just in full effect in that time. So, yeah. Damn. So by the time we got there, where I was ready to like move forward and figure a way out, she was like, "Yeah, I'm done." Like she wasn't over. I won't say she, she wasn't over me, but she was sure she didn't want to get into a relationship. She was just gonna like, you know, let. Whatever feelings she had for me just go away naturally. So, do you reckon there might be another lesson in there about ego? Oh yeah, I, I know, I know, I, you know, I know. We spoke about growth, and I know ego comes into into growth. Is, is there a more specific lesson you can give about ego? What would you say to someone who's got big ego right now, and they're going through this situation with a girl right now? What advice would you give? Man, I would say, I would say that you know, ego, ego is the is the enemy mm. in when it comes to 
to everything, to most things. Like, like ego is only good for so much. Like, like you, can, you can count on your hands what the ego is good for. But in general, it should be, it should be put at the back, far away when you're trying to like get something serious and meaningful done, whether yeah. it's work and whether it's in love, especially in love, because um, you just throw away a good thing, you know, thinking that you know you have to make the other person suffer or make them feel how you felt or just prove some weird ass point. Like ego is ego is death, man. So have you found um, someone since? You know, you know, someone as good as, as as she was since since you guys broke up. I haven't, I haven't gotten over her yet. You haven't gotten over her all this time. No. How long has it been? It's been three years. Oh, bro, come on. But it's, it's not. A, it's in a good way, actually. It's not in like I'm not like hung up on her. I don't like feel the need to call her or, or you know see her or anything. But I do yeah. look fondly on our time together. Like I look back at it as some of like the best time I've had in a relationship based on like everything we did in. The short time we're together, we're together for like three months. Yeah, and if you and if you add the three months we're talking before that, that's like six months mm. worth of yeah memories and experiences. Whoa! So you were so you were in this relationship for six months, uh, pretty, pretty much. I mean, if if you think about yeah. the time that you guys started speaking from day one, yeah, and and it's been three years. Yeah, bro, you you're between a rock and a hard place, man. Not really, though. Like it's not a, it's not it's not a thing where like I, I crave her back. I don't want her back. I'm I've moved I've moved on in that I don't need to like, you know, go back for closure or for happiness or for any answers or not nothing like that. You know, I'm fine moving forward. But I just look fondly on it in that she's she's still like someone who who's um who set the standards in terms of what I want a relationship mm-hmm. to be. You know, mm-hmm. it just has to be with um with someone who's a bit more secure in themselves and understands yeah. that you know you know relationships are hard and you just want to like figure it out but in general mm. i'm 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 okay like i think about it from time to time whenever i see her picture i'm like i smile to myself in fact she was on instagram live last night funny enough Damn. and, I, and I, I tuned in i just you know just watched her do her thing and i was like mm. you know she so she you is, guys have had zero communication in the last three years zero do you ever feel tempted just to drop her a message to say, hey, I'm just texting you to find out how you are, just checking on you? Not even a little, a little bit. I'm, if I'm, she I'm, was I'm, to do that, if she was to do that, would you be excited? Would you be happy? Would you respond? For sure, for sure. I'll, I'll be more than happy to like, you know, have a chat and catch up. You yeah. know, but at the same time, I don't wanna, you know, force it. I don't wanna be that you know how you know how girls complain about their exes who don't wanna leave them alone. Yeah. Yeah, do yeah you don't wanna be that guy. <laughs> that's that's not me. Like I'm, I'm I'm too cool for that kind of shit. So <laughs> So I just let her be man. Let her let her do her thing. I'm gonna do my thing and yeah. you know if we ever like bump into each other in a situation and I feel like it will happen when it's supposed to happen. You know, like yeah, I have no yeah. qualms and I don't know if she has for me but uh we'll find out when we do. in fact I've been to events where like my heart's like literally beating because I feel she might be here. Really? Yeah. And like, I keep telling myself like, like if I was like bump into her, like my heart, like literally like skip a beat, several beats, just sink to my fucking stomach and then come out my ass. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> like, so she still has that power over me and I like it. I don't mind it. And I, I can't wait till, you know, that time, but I don't feel the need to like, get back together or to say anything to her urgently it's just it's like it, 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 yeah it sounds like you wish her well you know generally. I do I yeah. do I'm the kind of guy who'd want to have that that closed off because the feeling you'd have would just nag me for too long I'd be tempted to just drop her a text and just let her know hey man you know I still feel Yo, for the first for the first one year I was yeah. tempted to I wouldn't lie mm-hmm. I wouldn't lie I was tempted to but I knew better in fact I, 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 yeah. I, I, I reached out to her on her birthday because maybe her birthday mm-hmm. was like Maybe I think four months after we broke up. Yeah. And I reached out to say happy birthday and um, she wasn't even like having it. She didn't even like respond to my messages or take my calls. So at that point, I knew that, okay, you know what, let's, let's kill this. And move it's, on it's, and it's that cue that just tells you, bro, no. Yeah. And her birthday, her, her birthday um, 12 months ago when we were, when we were talking, mm-hmm. you know, that was when we started dating, like a couple of days after. Mm-hmm. You get so, I wanted to like use this opportunity, like you know, to talk and maybe like you know, just have a few laughs and maybe just see what's up. But she wasn't having it, and I'm like, okay, cool. We moved. Is she? Is she? Is she with someone else now? I believe so. Yeah. 
Okay, why do you believe so? Do you have you seen something? Um, so I ran into her cousins. Okay, a couple of months ago, and they're yeah, like, yeah. "Yeah, you know, she's she's seeing someone. She's uh, she's seeing someone." But I, one thing I do know is that one of her friends, who's a mutual friend, tells me all the time that mm-hmm. what 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 she saw with, with both of us, she hasn't seen it with anybody else we've been with since. Like she, she, she hasn't loved anyone like she loved me. So I, I take that as solace, well you know, like, yeah, she's dating, but it's not the same. And it's so clear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Have you, have you heard the saying you only love once? Mm, of course. Yes. Have I've you heard have, that. You've heard it. Do you think it's true? And, and let's just focus on you before you answer that. Do you think you've loved once and that was it? Oh no. Oh no. I feel like I was just scratching the surface. I feel like I have more to give now. Yeah. Like, I feel like. Nice. I can't wait to um to take to another level with someone else. And I feel because I feel like what I felt in three months, imagine if I was with someone for like a year mm-hmm. or more, it's only gonna just just evolve over time. So, you know, while it was overwhelming for me at the time, now I know that um you know there's there's just there's levels, there's depths to this to this love thing. And yeah, so yeah. Right, so Tokoni, um, I mean, I know we we, we we mentioned three girls, Angela Tafazwa and Palessa. We've heard Palessa's story, we've heard Angela's one. Have you now remembered the Tafazwa story? Oh, yes, it's clear in my mind now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, this last story okay. brought it back. <laughs> okay, right, go on. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, but just because of time, just to, to cut mm-hmm. the long story short. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we, uh, so we're, we're dating and then I had to move back to Zambia, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And as I was, I, I didn't know how to tell her, right? Because it was a decision that I had made without, you know, telling her. I just, I found an opportunity that had to take me back. Mm-hmm. And it just meant we had to end, end things. So I mm-hmm. did, so this is, this is back to my immature self. This was in 2013, I believe. Mm-hmm. And what I did was I told her I had terminal cancer. And I had six months to live. Come on. No, you yeah. didn't do that. Bro, that was that was that was the vibe I was on. You know, so <laughs> Wow. Why I mean, why couldn't you just say I'm out? You know, I, I don't understand where I'm going. Bro, I was so dramatic. Like I was such a dramatic guy. Like let me, let me just put it like that. Like I just couldn't do shit normal, the normal way niggas do shit. I just had to be so extra with it. So she believed it. She cried. I died. And then two but months. You died. You died. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how did you die? I mean, and, and how did you communicate your death? <laughs> That's what I want to know. How did I just you communicate disa- your death to her? I just disappeared. And I, I told her that I was like, you know, in another country getting treatment. And, you know, I was with family and friends <sighs> now. So, you know, so she, it was just a whole lot of bullshit that I was just putting together. But here's the thing, though. Here's uh-huh. the thing. Mm-hmm. Two months ago, she found me on Instagram that- through my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You're Two a living ago. ghost. You're a living ghost. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> alive and well and sexy oh. and flexing and handsome. This She's is, seen me. This Bro. Is crazy. <laughs> so so what did she what did she say to you? She slides <laughs> in my DM. She slides in my DM, right? And <laughs> She, she, she doesn't even know how to go about it, right? So she's like, hi, excuse me. You look like someone I, I once knew who um, uh, died of cancer. Are you, do you know who this is by any chance? And because she's forgetting about me all this time. I was yeah. out of her, I was a memory. I was a ghost. I was dead. Yeah. <sighs> so and what did you say? I admitted it. I was like, yeah, I'm alive and I'm well. And, oh my um, God. We had to have that conversation all over again. And but you know what? Funny thing is, she took it really, really well. Actually, she took it sure? really I, well. Are you we, sure she did? I think so because we communicate like regularly these days. Like on on mm. like she comments on my photos. She asks me for help with things. She like she's even mm. starting her own podcast. And we just we just caught up. And I think you know what I did though was I used another lie to cover the lie, the last lie, the last and final lie. So I said to her that you know. Um, they found a, a, a treatment that was able to sustain me and, you know, I'm, I'm a lucky one. I'm a lucky guy, but I couldn't get back to you because I lost all contact. I was different. Like I was in a coma for some months. And you did, I just like one last lie to cover the entire lie. Bloody hell. And she, she was cool. 
Okay, okay, cool. that explains why she was cool. It's you know, it's the way that you positioned it, but yeah, <laughs> I've never heard anything like this in my life. Yeah, the feeling station got a, got a real one today. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Talking about value for money. Yes. Yeah, no, this, mm-hmm. this, is, this is absolute magic. So, um, is, is there any chance of you guys getting back together? Is there still chemistry from that time? Well, she's always reminding me how much she, she you know, she loved me and, you know, mm-hmm. how smooth. She's always like, using the, we always like to see each other about that, but there's, there's no way, there's no way back. I'm here, she's there. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly... Um, I'm not attracted to her type. Like, I've, my tastes have evolved since yeah, that time. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. So it's I, all cordial. I guess, I, I guess the best you guys can be is just friends, isn't it? And sometimes that's the better way to be. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Ah, well, thank you very much, man. Honestly, you've uh, you've taken me on a, a, on one hell of a trip today, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to come off this then and digest it all and just be like, whoa, what a roller coaster. But just to recap on the lessons, uh, two main ones really came was that growth is everything. Growth, growth, growth. Grow up. You may be less mature than you think you really are. Give yourself room to grow. And one that came towards the end is how ego is the enemy. Um, my guest Tokoni here says that you can count on your hands what good ego is for you. And it's not good a great number of things. So if you have ego stopping you from doing things within your work environment, within your friendships and your relationships, get rid of it because ego is the enemy. You've been listening to another episode of The Feeling Station. I'm your host, Tinto, and I look forward to catching you next week. Peace. Tell me what you're feeling. Satis and Daru Raini and Jackie Zain. Let me talk about my feelings. Let me talk about my feelings. Yeah. Uru doi motor no to kujitiru amai. Kujitiru amai. Love is a fire. Uru doi motor no to kujitiru amai.